And the fact is this, at the moment uh, I see the lion, well, what do you think I'm going to do? Still go get the water? Nah. Really, at that point, my somatic system says, the hell with the water, we're running. So what's going to happen is I suppress the viscera when I activate the somatic system. And the point is, they're, they're bound to each other. It's called the autonomic nervous system, sympathetic, parasympathetic for the words. But the fact is what? One pushes the blood into the, to the skeletal system, and the other pushes the blood into the visceral system because the blood is nourishing it. So the bottom line is that humans are different in, than the individual cells because we have this graded effect. And here's the beautiful part about it. And you know this. Love is the maximum nourishment for growth. When you're in love, you will run to that place wherever it is. You have to go over the mountain or through the mountain. You will be attracted to it so much. Why? Because love provides a whole system, the, all the hormones and connections of the system to do what? Provide for your growth and your maintenance and your health. However, the moment you get in fear, then what do you have to do? You back away, you wall yourself off, you separate from the environment, and the consequence is this. Protection from the environment cuts you off from the environment. Cutting yourself off from the environment cuts you off from life. Now, the issue is very interestingly revealed, especially in uh, kids in Eastern Europe where they have the, so many orphanages. I always thought that these kids in Eastern Europe were in the orphanages because all the war is going on over there. It turns out that's not true. The kids are in the orphanages because the parents are still having babies because of whatever their religious beliefs are, and they can't maintain them. So orphanages are dumping sites for kids that parents can't maintain, not because they don't have parents. And it turns out, in the studies on these kids, virtually the largest percentage, over 80% of them, become autistic. What is an autistic child? A child that doesn't respond to the outside. Why? Because in, in the protection required to survive, the child walls itself off. And as a result, look at the pathology that results. These kids do not interact with our lives because they put a barrier between them and the outside world. But what else happens to them? Every growth parameter is reduced by from 30 to 40 percent or more. Their size, their height, their physiology. Why? Not getting love is losing the nourishment. Not getting the love means that if you're not getting love and support, then you're also then trying to protect yourself. In the absence of love is fear. And the result is fear will shut off your system. And I'll explain exactly how that happens in the human. There's a master switch. Every one of us is affected by it. The system in medicine is called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. It affects every one of us. And it works like this. Stress is something that's perceived by the brain. Remember perception. <laughs> If I think of a signal as this is a scary signal, then it's stressful to me. Well, the issue is this. If I'm in growth, I go out and move forward toward it. But when I start to see stress, I have to protect myself. So the body gets, from the signal that the brain says, okay, mobilize the body for what? Growth or protection under stress? Protection. Well, how do you do that? And here's the answer. That the signal goes from the brain to the pituitary gland. Remember pituitary gland? Even you got that in high school. What is the, 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 the common name of the pituitary gland? The master gland. What does it mean? It's the gland whose function shapes the rest of this. So the brain says to the master gland, growth or protection. When the stress level is up, the master gland is given the, the signal to set up the body in the protection. So what happens is the uh, pituitary gland releases ACTH, which is a hormone that goes to the adrenal glands, which are on top of the kidneys. The adrenal glands secrete what? The adrenergic hormones, adrenaline. What's adrenaline for? Fight or flight. Now here's the interesting point. When the master gland says stress, what am I going to be in growth or protection? Okay, now here's what happens. The hormones of the adrenal gland squeeze or constrict the blood vessels in the viscera. And what they do is they force the blood from the viscera to go to the arms and the legs. Why would it do that? Think about why. Because you got to run. So you got to nourish the muscles. Well, the thing is, it preferentially puts blood into the, into the arms and legs. Well, the question is, if it preferentially put the blood into the arms and the legs, where was the blood before it was in the arms and legs? In the viscera. What's the function of the blood in the viscera? What functions? Growth. So when I get scared, what's the first thing that happens? I take the blood from here and push it out to here. Why? Because I've got to run and move and fight or flight or whatever it is I'm going to do. Well, the point is this. 
As soon as I got stressed, I shut down my growth mechanisms. The more stress you're under, the more chronically you suppress the growth mechanism. It's not, it's not a conscious decision. It's a part of the system called the HPA, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. The significance of it is that the releasing of the glucocorticoids and adrenaline cause a fight or flight response. Well, here's an interesting point. Okay, do, did you get this right away? That under stress, the chemistry of the body causes the blood to go from the gut region into the arms. Does that make sense? Okay, and it makes sense then, if I don't have the blood in the gut, then the function of the gut is reduced. And that's what happens. But here's the other thing. Now think about this one, because this is like a, another adding an insult to an injury issue. And it goes like this. My immune system is a very expensive organ system to run. It costs a lot of body energy to run. It's a very high energy usage. If I am trying to protect myself from something that threatens me on the outside, do I use my immune system for that job, yes or no? What's the immune system function? Protection on the inside, so bacteria or viruses get in me, okay? So here's the point. I start to see the lion. I get the release of the adrenaline and the glucocorticoids. The blood is running into my arms and legs so I could run away from the lion. What do you think happens to my immune system? Do I increase its function or decrease its function? Decrease it, in fact, the same hormones, this is the point, the same hormones in stress are used by the medical profession to shut off the immune system in people who receive uh, transplants of organs and tissues. Why? Because I don't want to reject them. So how do I regulate the immune system? Well, I give them these hormones. But what hormones are these? These are the hormones from stress. So it says, okay, you're not receiving a, a, a graft of an organ or a tissue, but you're under stress. What happens to your immune system? It shuts down. And the reason why it does that is conservation of energy because I'm dealing with the external environment as the source of the threat. Well, you know this as well as I know this. When you get stressed, whether it's at school or at work, when the stress levels get real high, that's when you get sick. Why? Because when the stress levels got real high, that's when you also shut off your immune system. Important point about it is this. Then people say, well, I caught a cold. Or I caught something. The new, the, the, it's not new, it's actually it, it's been a long-standing understanding in medicine already is this. Everyone in this audience is already infected with almost all the common pathogens in humans right now. They're in your blood. I can take a sample of your blood right now and I'll show you the bacteria and viruses that live in your blood. And you say, but Bruce, I'm not unhealthy. I'm pretty damn healthy. Look at me. So what are you talking about? I'm infected. And see what the name of the organisms are given as a group. They're called opportunistic organisms. What does it mean? It means that they live in your body, but they can't thrive. They can't thrive when you're in health. When you're in health, your physiology is like in a perfect balance. It doesn't support these organisms. But the moment you get stressed, you start to shut down the immune system, and you change the physiology of your body, then these organisms take the advantage. That's why they're called opportunities. That they were there all the time, but they can only express themselves when you're in a weakened state. When do you get in a weakened state? When you're under stress. So all of a sudden you start to get sick. You didn't necessarily catch it. You already got it. So the issue is this. What do you need to do to stay healthy? Regulate the stress. And what I will really emphasize over and over again, that remember I said approximately 5% of the people are affected or impaired lifestyle because of genetics. So their genetic defects, birth defects affect 5%. 95% of the people don't have defects in their genes and should live a normal life. When they start to get sick, then we can't go to the genes and start blaming the genes. We have to recognize that it was the environmental signals that we were adjusting ourselves to because when we're under stress, we automatically shut off growth. Now, you thought that was bad enough. You know, we shut down the viscera so we can run and so we're not getting growth. And we shut down the immune system because at that point uh, it's not helping us with an external threat. Let me add the last kicker to it. And here's the kicker that's real important. Think about it. In a fight or flight situation, do you think you would use neurological reasoning and conscious, you know, like this, you know, that? Or do you use reflex behavior? Which one? <laughs> reflex behavior. You know what? Reflex behavior is the hind brain, and thinking and logic and reasoning are the forebrain. So here's what happens, and most of you have experienced it. It's called exam stress. 